What is happening, YouTube? Cowboy here, and we are back with more Scholar for you. Picking up where we left off at the Shrine of Amana. So before we get too deep in, one thing I want to do is a quick backtrack. As was pointed out by a number of viewers, there were a couple chests that I happened to overlook. So I'm going to swing on back real fast and just pick those up for good measure. Just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, you may also notice that our fashion has changed quite a bit. Uh, we are now... We're still using our Hexer's hood, but we put back on the Hexer robes, kept the Lion Mage cuffs, and switched up to the Faram boots just to get a little bit more defense. Um, for PvE, it doesn't really matter. Why am I sliding on this elevator? That's really weird. But anyway, uh, you know, obviously this build is getting very near completion, and as with all of my builds, a huge, huge part of that is going to be the PvE effectiveness of the build. So with that in mind, I've been basically testing it and testing it and testing it to get it to a point where uh, it's PvP ready. And with that in mind, obviously we ended up changing up quite a few bits of our armor. Um, for the most part, you know, against random people that I'm fighting. Bonfire Aesthetic, Spell Quartz Plus 2, and Soul Boat. Okay. Mostly stuff that I didn't need, but whatever. Um, we'll run this way and we'll grab the other chest that was back in the room with the Pyromancers, and then we will teleport along the way we need to go. So we're gonna just run past all these guys with some MLG rolls. Well, basically I found that while the pure caster armor was obviously ideal for the cast speed from a PVE standpoint, um, inevitably it just allowed me to take too much damage in PVP from you know very basic weapons even. So with that in mind, I obviously switched it up just to give me a little bit more defense. Obviously, we still have the line cuffs on, and I couldn't really find a good pair of gloves that I could substitute that would basically give me um, as much of a benefit. You know, the, the defenses that are on the line cuffs aren't too bad, so that's the main reason I stuck with them. And then on top of that, you know, we also get the cast speed from them. The Faram boots were an obvious upgrade. Where was this chest? I missed a chest in here. There it is. It's definitely a lot darker than it used to be, so I do apologize for missing some of these. Estus Flask Shard. Definitely needed that, so glad I came on back to pick that up. Right. And Shrine of Amana. Alright. So, now we're going to actually get started. Part of me considered doing a, a whole episode of potential missed loot, which actually I just thought there's one more piece of loot that I missed that I do want to go grab. Son of a bitch. Right here. I think that uh, those two chests and the one I'm about to go to are the only major things that I've missed. I may be mistaken. There may be a couple more, but... Um, in terms of, of important things that need to be hit, I think this is about it. So there's the secret wall back here. That used to have an Estus Flask Shard back in the day. I don't know what it has anymore. Priestess Gear. I think that's it right here. Okay. Alright, so now I think we are officially caught up. Hello, spider. Why are you just sitting there? You didn't even drop down. <clears throat> Not a very good spider. Anyway, so we got the Priestess set, we got the Estus Flask Shard. Might as well go use that shard real fast. There we go. And hit our bonfire up. Shrine of Amana is probably going to be a two-part video anyway, just because it is pretty expansive. Probably one to get roughly halfway through, and then the second to clean up the rest of it and take out the Demon of Song. And there's quite a bit of loot at the shrine that I need to pick up as well. Come here, lady. Hey, hey you. Just however. No, I didn't I didn't want to do that. I want to do this. There we go. Reordering those slightly. Alright, now, for real this time, we are ready to go to the Shrine of Amana. I think... 
100% this time that that is the only loot I missed. So the Priestess set didn't really need. Um, Estus Flash Shard, definitely. Soul Bolt, not really. Kind of a useless spell. Either way, Shrine of Amana. Let's get this one kicked off. Try ranged battle. With what? Nothing to, to ranged battle here. I remember there's a shortcut. Is it this way? Not that way. It's a little bit down. What rings do I have on as well? Okay, rings are normal. Here we go. This is where I wanted to go. So we gotta poke that, get that to fall down. We gotta kill this guy. Why are you here? Ow. Why? No, don't do that. I'm trying to backstab you. Ruining my backstab. Ooh, Twinkling Titanite. Hello. And there should be... Kill you. This doesn't have a lock on it. That's right, it's only the chests that have locks that are mimics. So spice is always nice. And I think that's it for this little side path. Part of me wants to keep a torch out a lot more so that I'm more, uh, just more aware of uh, potential loot that I may miss. We're going to rest real fast. No real reason to, to waste an Estus shard. Or not a shard, but... Waste a, uh, a chug of Estus when we're just getting started here. So we gotta get through the shrine, following the shrine. We hit Undead Crypt, is where I'll be able to get my, um... Well, assuming I can still farm the Black Witch Staff, I can get one there. But more importantly, I'll be able to get my Sickle. Which will be the other weapon I need for this, and then after that... After the sickle, we need a black witch staff, and then... What else? I believe it's just black witch staff and... Um, some rings. I think that's it. So there's the piece of item I want. <laughs> the piece of item, yes, no. The piece of loot. So we're gonna crack a butterfly thing real fast here, because with light... As long as you have a torch, it's a lot easier to see the ground right here. So you can tell exactly where it drops off. Like if I go this way, you can s clearly see the uh, split. And there goes my goddamn torch, you asshat. Another twinkling titanite. And hey, I got a new butterfly to make up for the one that I lost. So that's nice. Actually, let me take off some stuff here that I won't need. Eh, never mind. Fuck it. Let's leave it on. I like having the, the torch out anytime I'm... Uh, making a significant cross with water. Helps out quite a bit in this area. Effigies, nice. Don't remember those being there before. Maybe I'm just going senile. That was not very nice. You should die. Love that these guys are easily farmable for effigies. Forty-four should be plenty to get me through the cost. Now we're gonna circle around first. Take out all the stuff. Fuck that. This chest. Some water. And basically as you're going through this area, I would suggest just, you know, constantly um, hitting R3, or pushing in the right thumbstick. We knew and stopped singing. Damn right you did. We are. We, we are. Two. It was also pointed out that I didn't finish the, uh, the quest with Pate. I was supposed to talk to him after doing that circle back around thing. So while that does suck, you know, it's not the, the end of the world. Um... You know, like I said, the engraved gauntlets aren't something that I would use with this build anyway. That's more of a melee-oriented build item. And on top of that, I'm honestly not a fan of using the engraved gauntlets. I just feel it's, you know, very gimmicky, relying on the RNG of them to give you success in battle. Like, if anything, if I were to use engraved gauntlets, I would use them purely because I think they look cool. But, um, you know, using them because of the RNG effect alone, I think, is a, kind of a dumb reason, to be honest. 
And I like these little, like, twinkly thingies around these guys. It's making them a lot easier to spot now. That. Let's kill you. Ooh, slumbering dragon shield. That's a good one. Remember, that does a uh, stamina effect. Maybe I'll put that one on. Medium tier shield. Ooh, that puts me above my weight threshold, so never mind that. That is not getting put on. That's so much easier to see them with that twinkle effect now. See twinklies? Chances there's an asshole hiding under the water. Not a mimic, excellent. Dragon charm. All right, first portion of the shrine is clear. Fatty, oh, because I can't fit. Let me readjust this real quick, I accidentally, uh, yanked on the recharge core with my foot. Back up, poison thing. Leave. we're coming up on a bonfire here. No, maybe not, maybe it's next. Bonfire ahead, but be wary of monster. There's a bonfire, oh yeah, that's right, this is the second bonfire we're approaching. So let's go grab that first, and then we'll, we'll deal with uh, the casting brigade. All right, second bonfire. Part of me is expecting a good amount of, uh... That was not the right spell. I kind of expect a bunch of invasions to happen, but so far, nothing. Alright, so now to see... Come on, get up on the steps. Now to see if this area has been neutered or if it is difficult. Because this used to be, like, the easy or the hardest area ever pre-nerf because of the, the tracking on those casts. So far, it doesn't seem that bad. And they did manage to get a quick pop on me there. If I remember, that is after the Hippoclops, or Ogre, as they are supposed to be called. More Twinkling Titanite. Hell yes. Come on, man. Alright, looks like we're going to have to kill her first before we uh, proceed. Whoa. Where did you come from? I didn't even see you in the water. Oh my god. I don't think it's as bad as pre-nerf shrine, but still, it's uh, pretty annoying right now. Why can't I lock you on? Jesus. I came out of nowhere. Did not expect that. <clears throat> not only was that not in the original, but that guy just kind of blends into the bullshit of the surroundings. Alright, so I wanna. I think a sorcery could. Which unfortunately, we don't have any on. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
even as a mage, a bow makes this area so much more tolerable. Having that long range snipe is fantastic. All right, now, they're dead. Now I gotta go through you. Can we fucking lock on, please? Oh my god, I'm out of Dark Orb. Who would have thought? Why can I not roll through that fucking spell? That's absurd. So, I'm looking over this way. You can see another knight and a bunch of trees. Now, previously, that used to be where you would go to pick up um, the king set. Now, if memory serves correct, um, you had to have a you had to have the the, uh, the king's seal to get that open. Regardless, I am gonna go that way just to confirm that. It's like a dragon rider. Why can't I lock onto you? Now I can. No idea why there's a dragon rider here. That seems like a bit much. Man, for whatever reason, I'm having a lot of difficulty getting lock-ons right now in the shrine. You know what? Let's just, uh... Do this. It's two handed. Damn it. Fuck, I got way too much shit on that bar. Something tells me this is the kind of guy that's not gonna respawn, though, so. Won't hurt to kill him now. Alright, you drop anything good for me? Petrified dragon bone, thank you. Quite a few bloodstains here. I can only imagine how many people died. And yes, okay. So after... I don't know if it's getting the ring or the crown, but it's... One of those is the, the condition. That door will unlock. And assuming it hasn't changed too much since the original. Inside of there, you should find uh, Vendrick's armor set. So, now we gotta get through the rest of this bullshit. We gotta get through the ogre. No, fuck it. They're not called ogres. I'm still calling them hippoclops. So, before that, let's, uh... Snipe her. Okay, now it looks like the arch guy is coming my way. Okay, let's open this up real fast. See if there's anything inside of here, if I can use this as a safe spot, if need be, okay. Smooth and silky. Alright, now we gotta fight our way through Ogre and one more. I think those will connect. No, really? There we go. Turning around, Fatty. You 
no reason to fight you outright when I can cheese you like this. Alright, let's grab the fruit. We're gonna pull out a torch again. So I'm running over to get the items. I want to make sure I have a clear visibility of the bullshit I need to get through to get it. Alright, now the path gets a little skinny here. Um, best advice I can give is to one, bring a torch, and two, just kind of stay close to the pillars. Use your torch to see um, which area of the pillar you can go on, either the left or the right. It can definitely be a little tricky. It looks like we have two of those bitches up ahead. So like right here, for example, you can see that we have to go on the left side. Right side just simply won't work. I think I can get up one more here. She fell to her doom. I think that's the only time I have to do that. Let's switch this back. I shall pull out the spear in case there's another one of those ground lurking things that shows up. All right, and we have our other Estus flask shard and the chest before we leave. Good old sunlight blade. Yeah, but I mean, as you guys can see right here, having the torch helps a lot, especially in these, you know, rather long uh, traverses with the water, like right here. That's a very common path people will just slip and die on. How absurdly awesome that is, and how much it really, really does help. So, if I remember, I think... No, there's nothing that way. It's once we get past the next slew of bullshit that we run into more stuff that we need to grab and use a torch for. All right. Well, either way, considering we're 20 minutes in, I'd say this is a good point, a nice uh, you know, central point in the Shrine of a Monitor to cut things off. So we'll wrap this one up here. In the next episode, we will make our way through the remainder of the Shrine in addition to taking out the Demon of Song. So make sure to stay tuned, and we'll catch you guys in a few hours.